let's say you're at least six months into your training, your weightlifting and your dieting, maybe you're even far past that. And you've noticed recently, perhaps in like the last month, that your body doesn't actually look any better or maybe even your strength hasn't went up in the gym. And so effectively, you're not really making gains right now. I've been in this stage multiple, multiple times, 10, 20 times over the last like nine years that I've been training and getting out of it as quick as possible will mean that your dream body will come to you a lot faster. Now, I've somewhat reached like, you know, the dream physique that I thought of nine years ago. But I could have gotten here in about four to five years max. Honestly, if I was like doing the right things, you know, obviously it's hard to like, you know, be a 17 year old who has all the perfect knowledge in your mind. But if I did, I could have gotten here about two and a half years instead of nine. And the number one thing that you really need to know about that is just how to keep making gains. And that you really know this, it's progressive overload. So you go to the gym, you know, when you're first starting off, you go to the gym, you, you make progress, you make muscle just automatically. The moment you step into the door, you've gained like a hundred grams of muscle just just that's just how it works when you go to the gym as long as you're doing like resistance training and not like cardio or some like fucking boot camp 50 reps crossfit type of shit so you're already making gains but then you'll get to a point when you'll keep like just neurotically checking your body you can relate to this can't you you'll be neurotically checking your body in the mirror wondering like what gives where's the progress like, what, you know what what's more that i could do and so then you start researching different workout routines, different diets, and like you start weighing out every gram of rice and you start like, you know, just neurotically thinking about, okay, how do, how do I make progress? And you often just forget about perhaps the single most important ingredient for making gains. And I guarantee right now that it might not even be the thing that you're thinking of. Because when I've looked online for help, no one really was speaking about this. They were all talking about workout routines and diet and this diet and this diet and this workout routine and stimulus. How many days a week should you train? All this stuff, bro. All of that is literally so minuscule compared to the biggest thing that will determine if you're making gains in the gym. Are you training hard enough? Are you training hard enough? Are you gritting your teeth past the pain of pushing close to failure? Because the thing is, to reach failure when you first start off, now failure is like, you know, the point when you can't like push anymore, right? So you can't even complete the rep, boom. To reach failure when you're first starting off, bro, it, it's like, it's very painful, but it's not like that hard to reach, is it? It's like, you know, imagine the, the first workout you did. For me, for example, I'm 17 years old and my brother's not even letting me use our garage gym. So he built like a little gym, you know, he bought all the stuff for our garage. He wouldn't even let me use it. So he gave me <laughs> my mum's pink dumbbells. Like, did you ever, what was it? It was like a, a blue, yellow, pink set. Like blue was the, the biggest one, then yellow, then pink. It was like this like three set dumbbell, like a little rack like this, like colorful dumbbells. And like the pink was like one kilogram or something, literally one kilogram. Cute little pink weights like this. He gave me those. And honestly, like <laughs> that was kind of heavy for me. I, I was kind of like anorexic at the time. Gave me those and my first ever workout, I remember, was somewhat of like a full body, just random exercises. I was lying down on the floor doing a uh, chest press like this. Then I was like, I had my knee up on a dining, like it was in our dining room, dining room chair, <laughs> doing dumbbell, one arm dumbbell rows. And it was so fucking painful. Then eventually when I did start in the garage, so the gym that my brother built, and I was on his workout routine, which was like a bro split chest on Monday, um, back on Tuesday, legs on Wednesday, you know, like five day a week bro split. I remember that it would take me literally some of the lightest weights that we had, five, six reps and my muscle would be done. I'd do like a couple of sets and literally my muscles would be sore for like two days, like heavily sore, which obviously means, okay, you made, mus you made muscle at this point, you made gains. I didn't need to do much to stimulate muscle growth back then. And yet now it's like I have to do quite literally 20 times more than that. And you know, for a large part of, of like my lifting career, I didn't realize that this was literally the most important aspect of continuing like making gains is the stimulus that you put into your muscles. People overlook this because you know, it, it's something that hurts your ego. The thing is, the weird thing is like, the people who needed to watch this video have already clicked off because they don't have the humility to sit through and listen to someone tell them that they're not training hard enough because pretty much every guy thinks that he is. 
every guy in at least in this space you know there might be some like normies out there who are like yeah i don't really train up fine but every guy in this space of like you know self-improvement going to the gym making gains oh yeah i'm an alpha male we all think like yeah oh, yeah push i train hard i train hard there's even earlier videos of me like two two years ago where i'm t like t saying like oh yeah I, I still like i train so hard i train legs so hard no you don't bro there's literally you know you know the the video of mine that got really viral the aesthetic body guide it's like three million views it literally in that i talk about like yeah i still hit legs so hard like no no I didn't I literally didn't bro like I was like the thing is I wasn't lying I literally was not like lying to the camera or anything I believed it how interesting is that like a few years ago I believed that I hit legs hard I'm telling you right now of how I was hitting them relative to my strength and my capabilities then I was not training them hard I didn't realize this and it's it's gonna be kind of common sense to a lot of people but perhaps you've been like not using this common sense for you to make gains you have to be close to like really really close to failure you have to really be close to like the point which you can't do another rep. And trust me, trust me, that hurts. You don't realize how painful that is. Do you know, for a, a large part of like me training legs, I didn't like doing like barbell squats or anything. So I would do like these other exercises where I'd go up to like 15, 20 reps. And I could have busted out like quite literally another 10 reps, but I'd stop just because it was already painful. Bulgarian split squats was was this for me. I do like 20 reps, you know, with your, Bulgarian split squats is kind of like you um, you put your feet like on something like, you know, on the bench behind you. So you're like almost uh, squatting on like one leg at a time, almost like a lunge with your feet behind you. And that kind of exercise, you can literally do 50 reps before failure, but it, beca it becomes like intensely painful at 15. And so, of course, you kind of stop at 20 thinking, well, yeah, it's really painful, but it's not about it being painful. It's about your capabilities being pushed. Trust me when I say, like, only for the last few workouts that I've done have I really been experiencing failure. If you want to know what it takes to keep on making gains, it means every single workout that you do is incredibly painful. If you're not like gritting your teeth and actually making like noises in the gym, honestly, you're probably not training hard enough. And I'm not saying this as some alpha male who like grunts in the gym or anything. Like, I don't like it when people do that. I hate when people like overly make noises. But I'm saying like, I don't like being, you know, the kind of guy who makes noises in the gym. I'm not doing this on purpose, but like, I can't even help it. You don't realize that like, when you're training hard enough, you literally can't help it. You, you almost like grunt and moan and like you go, ah, oh, like, like you don't even mean to do it, but it's, you're literally at 10 out of 10 intensity. That's what it takes to make gains. I don't think it's volume. I don't think it's workout routine. I don't think it's any of those things, even diet. And the thing is people are going to comment out because I've said that and you know, I've hated on the thing that they really preach about. But the thing is those things of course make a difference. But generally, like, you've already been implementing those things, haven't you? The thing is, you've already probably got a workout routine. And yeah, it's, it's push pull legs better than full body three times a week. Oh, how many times a week should you train? Yeah, bro, bros. But, you know, like, the thing is, we know those basics, right? This video isn't for anyone who's, like, still debating the basics. This video is for someone who's already watched the, like, comparison between push pull legs and upper lower and full body. And you, you should train two to three times a week and it takes 72 hours. Like, bro, we know those things. One gram of protein per pound of body weight. And, you know, that's not very accurate. But, like, uh, 1.2 times your, your lead body. Bro, we know those things. We know those things. What we've been overlooking is like literally the most fundamental, most obvious answer. But it's the one that you just don't want to accept because it's literally just painful. Bro, it's, it's easy to eat one gram of, of uh, protein per pound of what it is pretty easy once you've done it for like six months it's like come on it's automatic switching over from full body to push pull legs you know your workout routine it's not only is it easy to change your workout routine it's actually kind of like fun and enjoyable because you get that novelty feeling you get that you know the um shiny object feeling the grass is greener kind of feeling don't you it's actually kind of fun to switch up your workout routine even though it's a bad thing to do the thing that isn't fun the thing that literally like right now you might be hyped thinking yeah okay train harder bro i'm telling you right now if you were hyped through this video i'm telling you right now that you're the kind of person who, who is probably not going to make more gains. Because what I'm telling you is not something that you get hyped for. What, what I'm telling you, when I'm saying train harder, train till failure, you should be like, if you really understood what that means, you should be watching this video with anxiety. You should be literally, what not with hype, not with bravado, but with anxiety thinking like, fuck, he's right, fuck. I, don't, I really don't want to do that kind of workout, bro. It fucking hurts. So what's your energy been like through this video so far? Have you had this kind of like, yeah, like, yeah, train hard, yeah. No, I eat sleep like bro I'm telling you right now how hard you actually have to train is not something that's like a positive thing bro it's incredibly painful 
it's incredibly painful. That's the single reason why I don't think you're making gains. Now, the thing is, there's other things. Perhaps you, you clicked on this video because you expected me to just say the same boring things that every other like person's going to be saying. Oh, eight hours of sleep, protein, recovery. Oh, we're tired of it, aren't we? I'm tired of being told, oh, yeah, pro, like, oh, make sure you sleep eight hours. That's a myth. It literally is a myth. Like, oh, you need to sleep eight hours. No, it's not. No, you don't. We all need to sleep different amounts. And chances are, as long as you don't have extremely bad sleep habits, you're probably sleeping enough. Literally, I, like, I mean, th that's a whole separate debate, but like, in terms of sleep, improve it, follow the advice you've seen, oh, no, you know, no screen, like, the thing is, it's boring advice, bro, no, yeah, no, no screens before bedtime, you've heard it before, no, oh, yeah, don't eat a big meal three hours before, yeah, fine, you probably don't already, oh, yeah, you know, uh, we get some sunlight in the morning, okay, Andrew Huberman, I will, so it's boring advice, and the thing is, once you actually research sleep a lot more than just reading one book or seeing one podcast, you realize it's so individual that, like, being told you need eight hours of sleep is just total bullshit. Now, I don't say this as one of those people, like, oh, I don't need eight hours of sleep, like, you know, who kind of don't even know it. I've had my genetics, like, my DNA tested with, like, an expensive, like, test of everything. I've got, like, a full-on, like, list of everything to do with my genetics, and I actually don't need, I need less than seven hours of sleep, and which was interesting when I, I got that, I had, like, a sense of relief, because I track, I'm not wearing it right now, but I have an Aura ring, it's, like, a $300 ring, I have a $2,500, um, cooling mattress i've had a two and a half grand sleep coach and everything so i've done a lot more work in sleep than a lot of people have and trust me when i say like unless you've got very bad sleep habits it's probably not sleep that's like bringing you down you know people say like, oh well you need recovery to sleep you need recovery to make gains honestly no you don't Yo, you need a really good diet to make gains oh no no you don't like yeah you know as things go on yeah of course you need to like start implementing those and i'm not being a guy who's saying oh yeah you don't need those things but the thing is you can have the worst diet. If you're training hard enough, you're gonna make gains. You can have bad sleep. If you're training hard enough, you're gonna make gains. But if you don't train at all, or if you don't train hard enough and you sleep really well, you're not gonna make gains. If you don't train at all, or you don't train hard enough and you have the perfect diet, you're not gonna make gains. Think about it. That like some people may disagree with this, and I I get that like quite surprising. That's a surprising fact that people disagree with. But like that that, that is a fact, and I think you might be able to agree. There is one thing that like creates the stimulus for muscle growth and it's training or injecting yourself with testosterone. Once your testosterone is quite literally seven times as high as like natural average levels, then you, you pretty much make muscle natural, like just around the clock without training. But that's like steroid level testosterone, 3,500 nanograms per deciliter compared to the average of like 500 to 700. So like seven times as much, right? Sleep, of course, and, you know, good diet, improve your testosterone, but not to the level that you're getting, like, steroid level benefits, right? So, literally, the one thing that can actually cause muscle growth to begin with is the stimulus that comes from training and actually tearing the muscle through resistance training, through weightlifting or calisthenics. That's the one thing that can actually cause muscle growth. Good sleep doesn't cause muscle growth to begin with. There's people out there who've had, who've had fantastic sleep, no problem with sleep at all, but they don't go to the gym, so they're not jacked. They don't even have, like, any, like, visible muscle. There's people out there with perfect, you know, imagine those like really clean diet guys who, who go running or some shit. Really, really clean diets, but they're not jacked. But then you often see like these kind of like, you know, guys who've gotten into fitness who train kind of like, you know, nice, kind of like kind of hard, but they've got like shit diets and they drink a lot of alcohol and they've got fucked up sleep and yet they still look jacked. How interesting is that? Because you can see pictures of my fuckboy days in uni when I was going out three times a week, taking drugs, drinking half a liter of vodka, eating shit food, literally being sleep deprived till like 5 a.m., 6 a.m., 6 a.m., 7 a.m. And yet I still looked pretty good. Now I'm not advising to do that, but what I'm saying is to emphasize the importance of the training. The, the number one reason why you're not making gains is because of the training. Now, if you look at the comments on this video, there's going to be people who didn't want to accept this message and they'll disagree with the last few minutes. I've almost baited them with like, you know, I just mentioned sleep and diet because you'll see them comment. Oh, actually sleep, oh, sleep is really important. Oh, diet is important. Of course it is. It's crucial for your health. Of course it is. But it's not the reason why you're not making gains. You don't need to like, you know, neurotically try and improve your sleep. You should try and improve it. But the same with your diet. Those aren't, that isn't the reason why your gains are lacking right now. The reason why you've stopped making gains is because you're simply not training hard enough. It's not your workout routine. It's not the diet. It's not the, the grams of carbs or protein or the sleep or anything like that. It's literally just that when you have that weight in front of you, when you're on your back and you're trying to press that fucking barbell, you stop three reps, four reps before failure. 
when you're squatting, like you literally like you re you racking like oh yeah that was a hard that was a hard set yeah. If you can breathe, if you can literally still talk after your set of squats, bro, you're not pushing yourself hard enough. And now this isn't like you know trying to be like some gatekeeping thing of like yeah I'm so high and mighty I I, I self harm in the gym or some shit. But this is just me speaking to my younger self who didn't realize that this was of course the number one reason why he was struggling. The last few workouts that I've done in, in the gym, bro, I've went with this intention of like, just push myself hard enough. And you know what I've had to do for that? I've had to go from six workouts a week to I went from six workouts to just one, literally just one. And of course, not enough volume and stuff, but just one. And inside of that workout, I literally just did one set per exercise. I had to start again. Trust me when I say like, okay, if you're pushing yourself hard enough, the current workout routine that you're on now with that many sets and all these exercise variations, bro, trust me when I say, if you're working hard enough, you wouldn't be able to do that workout. If you're working hard enough, you like if you really wanna switch over right now, this is gonna like hurt your ego and you know, really make you feel weird. Reset, do one workout a week, full body, maybe five, six exercises, and literally just allow yourself to do one set. Try this, try this like uh, experiment, just do one exercise, or you know, multiple exercises, but one workout a week, one set. You're not really trying to make gains, you're just trying to learn how to train hard again. Limit yourself to just one set per exercise and tell yourself before you're out to do this exercise, I have one set and go and push for 10 out of 10 intensity. And guess what? Even though you've just told yourself that you only have one set, you only have this opportunity and you've told yourself, okay, I wanna go for 10 out of 10 intensity. You'll do the set, you'll put it down and you'll be like, fuck, that was like an eight. That was an eight and that was probably the hardest you pushed in months. So what was the intensity of the last like six months of your training? If you try that, this experiment, you'll be amazed at like how little you are actually training like intensely, but it will hurt your ego. That's my invite to you. If you wanna go try that kind of workout, literally just one set per exercise. You're not allowed to do another set after that. You tell yourself, okay, go to 10 out of 10. Go to like as close as you can to 10 out of 10. You'll get so painful that you'll literally just drop the weight and you think, shit, like I probably, if I was like more disciplined and you know, in a better mood and everything, I probably could have pushed out another one set. I could've, probably could have like held it more. And I'm talking 10 out of 10 intensity. It doesn't just mean like, oh, I'm at failure, so I'll drop it. It means that like, you're here and you struggle for the fucking rep. You literally struggle, struggle, struggle. You're not even like hitting it. You're literally going down. You don't just let it drop down. You're literally like millimeter by millimeter going down. Like you can't even push it. It's literally pushing against you now. Millimeter by millimeter, you're just keeping it there for like five seconds. Then you let it down. And then you'll be like, hmm, that was like an 8.5 out of 10 intensity. And then you'll realize why you're not making gains.